Welcome to a segment of the ShiftCast. If you want to catch the full episode, you can catch that on our YouTube channel or Spotify. Let's get right into it. North America, we got regional recaps. We're going to start in a, a wild final event. Open Qual 6, the last regional of the season. NA is finished, uh, along with Mina Sam at SSA. Everything is kind of set in stone for the most part. Um, G2 absolutely tore through the event this time. I don't know if y'all saw like the clips and highlights, but they were for real freestyling. Like Beast Mode, there's a, I do these top five clips, right, on Mondays, and I go into the replay. And y'all, I'm not kidding, like 23 seconds prior to the play where he comes like hovering off the ceiling and then like forces that ball into the top corner around gyros. He doesn't leave the attacking third and he just goes from side to side, like cherry picking off the top. They were just yeah. unbelievable confidence. You could tell that they were, um, you know, they, they, they did not feel concerned or worried. And by the way, that's at zero, zero versus dig. That's not like they had a seven Oh lead or anything. They're just playing with such confidence. They have been so consistent throughout the season, nothing less than top two. Every event, including the major. I mean, that is a level of consistency that no NA team, at least in open era, has shown since we started. Yeah. Ever. yeah. I mean, yeah. Go ahead. Unfortunately, yeah. I missed a lot of the matches, but I did see Beast Mode just being in the attacking <laughs> Crazy, thirds dude. the entire time, basically. Yes. He was just camping the other's net, yeah. <laughs> the opponent's net. Just cherry picking, like you said. I mean, across, uh, what is it? Six series, it dropped six games. I mean, that, that's pretty clean. I mean, uh, we have, we've that's seen... Like downright and like Falcons-like. Yeah, yeah. We've seen teams clean it up even more than that. But in a region like NA, you get some teams that can go crazy against you, even right. if you, your name is G2, and they just kept it clean. Yeah, um, I think the team looked like a team that knew that everything was clinched, right? Sure. And sure. I think it was a much healthier way than, hey, let's like... Let's just kind of like take it easy. Like everything's mm -hmm. good. We're gonna be one seed in 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 all the tournaments or any one seed in all the tournaments. It seemed like it was more like, hey guys, we got this free event, right? We have this event that that uh, doesn't really mean much in the in the greater swing of things. Let's go out there and let's just like try shit and have fun. Um, and I think it was a t G two. What they showed is that they have so much confidence domestically yeah. that. They know that it's not about the domestic tournaments anymore. They know that in order to immortalize themselves in the esport, they're going to have to do it on land. So this was kind of their farewell because, you know, you never know what happens. This could be the last time we ever see this G2 roster specifically play regionally. It could be. It could be. I'm not saying it will be, but it could be. Things happen. They could bomb out of the land, right? They could bomb out of both lands. Look at FaZe uh, last season. Um and um they went out there and they and they played like they knew they were the best team in the region and they played like they thought they were the best team in the world so i'm uh, i'm so excited to see them because I, I can't remember the last time i saw a north american team uh look this comfortable on a pitch also if you can just win 7k per player on a weekend who's yeah. saying no to that just go <laughs> well they know everyone else it's like it's it's all nerves for them like there's six seven yeah. teams that are trying to win they're, clenched, they're in there they're like right. Let's, we're all we're obviously better than these guys, right? Like, let's just go, let's go play, and and, and they and they did that, and it was awesome. Well, Michael, Michael, NG lose their second straight top eight match after the open qualifier four win, and uh, what's happening? I mean, what's going on? Let yeah, me tell I even you. Asked let me a tell question you. right after the games. And Michael wasn't very receptive to it for some reason. Let me tell you, let, uh, me, tell uh, you, uh. let me tell you. I know about another team that started off with a great open qualifier in their split and then went out top eight twice. Oh, yeah? And what happened to them? They won the Copenhagen Major. Okay. See? M80 did not win the Copenhagen Major. I mean, he didn't go top two the first time either. Sure. I'm talking about the gentle mates. Every, what did everyone say about the gentle mates? Oh, they had a good regional, but they're not all that. Oh, are they even going to make top eight, guys? <laughs> Meanwhile, in a worse region, you got those the, the, the Panthers down there and Sam blowing games to anybody and everybody, and no one whoa, cares. Whoa. To, oh, whoa, whoa, Furia. Whoa, 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 whoa. We didn't ask about Furia. Well, I'm saying. Well, 
I'm a, I watch teams go out top eight every week. Okay. And I, and listen, I'm just going to say G2 looked a lot more confident knowing they don't have to go up against Tiger Nation. Okay. So, this is, I mean, this listen. is absolute textbook deflection. This is listen awful, listen. Michael. Terrible. Listen, Come are we, are we at our best right now? No, <laughs> but, but listen, Jack, but. App Jack, he's the, he, you know, he's, uh, he's the captain, you know, the captain's yep. going to get us right. Yep. FK, the drag us somewhere if we have to be, you know, he, we go, we can always turn on FK mode. Sure. And he can just start chasing. And, uh, you know, I know he's gotten a lot of flack the last two regionals mm -hmm. uh, and by me too, yeah, out of anger, not, not out of right logic, but you know, you got to give coach Chrome a chance. He jumped in pretty, pretty like over a very small sort of trade window. He, they did well. It seemed like playing kind of like not that much different than they were. They haven't been themselves now that he's had a time to settle in, but now they have time. They have a month to get right, to integrate him fully as the coach of the team. And then they have another month after two or month or two after that to integrate him for the world championship. Okay. So, well, obviously I'm not, I would never call for another's job, especially in a, uh, in an industry as uh, volatile as esports. but you know, this is now third time that we're thinking uh, what's going on with the team Chrome's coaching in the last two years, phase SSG and now Genji. I think he's kind of on the clock, right? He's gotten this shot to play to, to, to he's gotten this shot to coach one of the best teams in the world. And uh, while he, uh, he had immediate success, um, the longer he's been there, the more they've looked off. And so now I think it's time to, to prove why you have been considered an all-time coach is go in there, fix it and, and, and get a great result. And I believe in him. I believe him. All right. Interesting. Genji struggles to close out the season, but you're right. They do have some time, about a month between now, a little less than a month between now and, and the major. September's so all that matters. We'll see. Uh, we'll see if they can turn things around on the big stage. OG upset Space Station in top eight, fight back from be being down 3 2 in the tiebreaker versus Rebellion as well. And they clinch themselves not only a spot in London, but they also secure that. Uh, world Championship berth. Um, OG, I mean, listen. At the beginning of the season, and I don't mean this in, 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 a, you know, in an insulting way, but they were the leftovers. Those, those were the players that were left off of those two powerhouse teams that formed. And I think a lot of people saw them as you know, a third piece, a support role, a glue player, whatever you want to call them. And so... I think the general idea was that when you put all three of those players together, sure, they'll be pretty good, but I don't think many people had them pegged as a top three, top four team, especially, especially after that first regional where they went out 0-3. And I think that was probably the biggest problem because there's that little bit of doubt when you put the three kind of leftover players together, and then you see such a rough performance. And you remember, too, when they start event number two, they go 0-2 down in Swiss, right? But, man, as soon as that... Uh, second event hit, and they were able to, to catch their stride in Swiss. It has been smooth sailing and, and really an upwards trajectory all season since then. They've been stronger and stronger and stronger. It seems like the team's getting more and more confident. Um, you know, Calm and uh, I've heard Calm and Nolly in different interviews just talk about how they lean on their experience. You know, they, they, they take it one game at a time. They're not worried about the external factors. In that Shopify game, they're not worried about the fact that this makes the major makes world championship or ends the season potentially. They're just looking at it. This is the best of seven against Shopify. We know we can win that game or we know we can win that series. And so I think there, there's something to be said for their maturity, their willingness to work through um, any of the, the speed bumps that they had early in the season. And, you know, I'll be the first to say, I definitely underestimated this team specifically early on. And, and they have just exceeded expectations in my opinion. And I think they should be proud of, of uh, the performance that they've had thus far throughout the season. Yeah, I think you're right. I don't think anybody had them packed to be the team they are right now. And I don't know if anyone had them packed up at all. You'd have to ask their significant, other, significant others. But Nully is the kind of player to make every team he steps into a better team. He's mm -hmm. proven that time and time again. And all three of them are the kind of player to just not care about yeah. what people think uh, <laughs> their placement should be in, in, right. in NA. Because they have been 
proven so many times. Yeah. Yeah. So I... yes, they're maybe not the kind of players you'd expect to do it without like a top scorer, like a mm -hmm. striker player that everyone expects to be leading that. But all three of them can just rotate around each other and, and play the game the way they want to. Yeah, I, I want to add on. Um, I, I think what you said, Hoodie, about how they weren't looking at it as a land qualification match, that their season may be over if they don't make it to this land. Um, you could tell. The minute Shopify went up in game six, their entire demeanor changed. Yeah. And obviously they have one player who has seen everything, but two-thirds of that Shopify roster has never been to a land. And yep. you could tell they turtled up the minute they realized, oh my God, if they don't score for a minute and 30 seconds, we're going to London, right? And the difference was that one team had been there before. One team has major winners and, 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 and regional winners. And the other one is, is mostly comprised of players who are still, I would consider, in the developmental stage of their career. But there's only one, there's only one reason that, that OG is here. Like, let's be honest. Nolly's fantastic. Calm is, is really solid. Jacob Natman, take a bow. Eight years in. Eight years in. He was special. going to war against his coach. Vitality's coach. Carming Corp's coach. All these guys are coaches now. His coaches are his old peers, and he's competing against the best in the world. He was, and I will say it, a top Seven top eight player in NA the split. He was phenomenal, but he's the reason that they're here. He found another gear once again. And I think, listen, I understand everyone loves Champions Field, but he's the greatest North American Rocket League player. What he has done, no one else has done. It is completely, he, he's the only player who's ever made three league play world championships and three open air world championships. Mind you, there's only a handful of players who have made all three open air world championships. It's like him, Vatira, or uh, and like the the KC guys, or so the original Moist guys, and then I think the first killer or something. And so it's like, at what point do we just admit that he is eternal, that he has defeated Father Time and peed on his grave, <laughs> that he will be here until I'm not here? J Naps. <laughs> Competing through Pride his uh, through into his forties, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Now, in all seriousness, it really is impressive. I think a lot of us can can definitely look at like Garrett G's longevity, and obviously he's not able to continue making lands the way JNAPS is. Um, and J I don't know that JNAPS was competing as early as Garrett, but um, you know, it's very soon after. And to be like you're like you're describing, Michael. I mean. Almost everybody that was competing when JNAP started is done. Retired, coach, whatever. Off doing something else. And he is still rocking and rolling. It is so impressive. And it's a testament to um, discipline. Mm -hmm. Right? Because I think, like, motivation is one thing. But to, to, to maintain this level for as long as he has, you, you have to work. You have to work hard. You know, it is not it's a job to him. Yeah. And it's you, have to be, to you have to be disciplined. So, you know, I think he, he shows a level of professionalism, a level of maturity, and, um, and discipline, again, as I said, to the craft. Uh, what, what, an, what an impressive career, even if he hangs it up at the end of this season. Incredible stuff from JNAPS. Um, rebellion, luminosity, and, of course, everyone else, see their season come to an end after a heartbreaking open qualifier six. Which teams, if any, that missed out on lands and, and missed out on, on worlds do you guys think should stick together none of them blow it up there's one which Same. one snowman mm. yeah mm. yeah 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 keep it in the principle case, yes keep it don't ah. don't okay but look what are you where are you gonna go like what are you gonna the thing do? is what is it's not do? about them not being good it's that I know, like I know, but but Answer, what are you going to do? You're going to take Frosty and put him where? Space Station Gaming. Okay, viable. Fair enough. Fair enough. And then, I, listen. Outside of, because I'm looking around, it's outside of Space Station. Scribbles. Like, I don't know that joining OG Rebellion, Sports. I don't know that joining Rebellion is going to level up no. his. They need, they need a third man. They need a third man. I, don't I can know see that... Reveal, maybe. 
maybe reveal maybe to, to uh, Rebellion. I would like to see, you know, listen, no disrespect to Calm. He's been good this year. I genuinely still think that Nolly and JNAPs are world-class players. And I think scribbles with them would be completely unlock it. It would be like diet, diet vitality. Like diet with the way vitality that it's built. Like you got Nolly and Redos in a roll just going for everything. You got JNAPs, Alpha, secondary score, secondary playmaker. And then you got a wizard in the middle. That's like what I'd like to see. I think the snowmen, the reason I don't want to see them stay together is because there is a hundred percent chance that they're going to say they're going to stick. And then one of them is going to get an offer and leave. And then it's going to be like yeah. a whole thing. And then we're going to have to hear about how 15 year olds hate each other. And I hate that stuff. I want it to be an amicable. I want these children to learn how to, <laughs> how to separate. Just blow healthily. it up beforehand. Yes, exactly. Well, okay. Yeah. Right. There's yeah. a, there's a decent chance. One or more are going to get poached. I feel like rebellion wouldn't be such a bad spot though. A reveal, yeah, totally. It'd be amazing. It it might be time for Parth and Two Piece to split up as a duo, <laughs> and then but who's maybe. gonna fill in? Someone from Snowman? Why not? I, I I don't necessarily disagree from our perspective, but I think there have been multiple opportunities for that duo to split, specifically like chances for Two Piece to go join other squads, and it seems like he doesn't want to. Now maybe there is. Maybe there's like a limit to falling short of your goals where, you know, you fall short, you fall short, you fall short, and maybe that perspective changes. Um, but thus far, it seems like he has chosen to stick with Parth as a duo. Well, I, I didn't know, man. choose I, to I, get a nine I, I just look around and I, I, I don't, like, I don't know. <clears throat> okay, well, let's do it, okay? If you had to take one of these, one of these players... A one player or all three separate players, you cannot keep a team together. And none of the none of the players can play can be on teams that from NA that made land. So all the leftover players that are now out of a so job. So Nochi 2, Gen G, SSG, okay. Okay. OG. Yeah. You gotta put three of them together to make a team that you believe has the best chance to actually compete based on either their current performance or their projection performance, based on their age and flashes or whatever. Um, which what's your what's your dream non LAN team? I think this is why I'm because I don't know. Like I don't know what the answer is. I feel like a lot of these players had a good team at the beginning of season. I I thought Rebellion should be good. I thought M A yeah. should be good. Those are my two NA three and four last. last the, the so I don't year, I don't so. know. I don't know what like you know swapping out Parth for AJ. What does it do? You know, swapping out who a Parth for a reveal. What I don't know what these things do. I don't know. Well, then I'll tell you what you how it'll work. Okay, this is easy. First of all, the best player that didn't make a land uh, is Two Piece. Two Piece. Yeah. I don't know what the whole thing was about Two Piece this year. People were like, actually, Two Piece isn't that good. Actually, Justin is carrying. He's a baller. Actually, that kid is a freak. He's a freak. And anytime his teammates play well, listen, I'm sure that the, the random mid-season explosion that cost them a world spot, mm. like if they had gone top eight twice in those things, they're literally like tied, I think, with OG for a land spot right now. Um, that, they, I mean, that was a team problem. Maybe they, you know, Partha said they weren't working as hard as they should have. So maybe like he wasn't grinding. When he was on, when he looked like he was two-piece, he would look like he was as good as anybody when they played G2, when they played Gen G. He's on the list. That kid is a star. I don't know how he's going to unlock it, but he's a star. Next one, my dog, Wavy. Okay? okay? Wavy is the perfect player to compliment players because he's willing to just go and challenge the way that a lot of young NA players aren't. He plays a lot, and he'll tell you this. He said it multiple times. He plays a lot like a young Appjack. Okay? Now, will he turn out to be Appjack? Probably not, but... The play style is there to be like a really good forward creator and someone who isn't selfish. And third, people are going to hate this because he was kind of off the radar, but I still believe genuinely that this guy is world-class. It's missed. Mm. Missed. The, the guys that Miss played with, no dis listen, Garrett G is my dog. I love Garrett G. Not a main event quality yeah. player. Barely a main Same event here. quality player this year. And Aqua, Toasty, Dries. These are, these are like bottom four t players like their bottom four main event players there for the majority of their careers mist made them a surefire every event main event team so i got two pieces as my second man kind of lj get the get give me some space let me work i have wavy 
up front, causing problems, and I got missed. I don't have to explain what missed does in that back third. That's my team. Okay. I think that team okay. with the right coaching could be a legitimate land contender mm. next year. Two piece wavy missed, huh? Okay. Yeah. Dial it. I would also slot two piece in there, but give me scribbles. Mm hmm. I like that. And round it off with Aris. Because mm. that's a fun team. Who? Aris. Aris, okay. We've seen Aris, Andy, and Five up on, on Moist Esports. I know this is recency bias because it's just happened in the, in the last open qualifier, but they were surprisingly good. I mean, they swept a uh, snowman in the Swiss stage and yeah, they got a Mickey bracket in the playoffs. Oh, shut up. Shut, shut, your, mouth. shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Four, shut two, your mouth. One. A shut Mickey it. Bracket. But they also <laughs> took two games off of Shopify Rebellion. Yeah. So that's pretty all right. That's pretty I think Aris on that team has been really, really solid. The mm -hmm. team itself has mm -hmm. had maybe some more struggles than Snowman overall for uh, such a young team. I think they were more consistent, no? Three top, four top eights. Are they eights. actually now? Three top eights, a top they four, looked, and then they, they kind of sucked a little shaky the last first. Time. Yeah, I think they went out 9 12 three but times. These, they yeah, had this, two top this eights. split was a little shaky, but the first one was three top they, eights. And then they, they finished it with their best result as a team. I feel like they were which, a bit which more Which team consistent. are we talking about? Moist. Uh, moist, 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 moist pirates, yeah. moist, pir moist pirates. Right. Yeah. 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 No, that's right. That's right. I mean, they, they have been good, and Aris is a big part of that. So I, yeah. I'd slot them in there as a, as a team from some outsiders. Mm. Legend. Aris is a legend because he teamed with another guy named Aris, but it was E R I S, yeah. and it was like <laughs> it was like one of those things where it's like only one of us can survive. <laughs> like he just outpaced him. Aris, Aris, and Forky. Only Forky would team with two guys with the same name, you know, because that's a Forky <laughs> legendary move. stuff. Mm. All right, hoodie, do you have one or are we moving on? Um, no. All right, no AJ, no Justin. I could see a little retire, not retirement. That's disrespectful, but I wouldn't be surprised if we saw all like a bunch of the players who were sort of old guard that didn't make it. I'm thinking like. Some mixture of AJ, Mist, Arsenal, and Justin, like three of those players, teaming up and getting an, a healthy bag from an, a tier one org next season. <laughs> healthy bag. Healthy bag. Healthy like for the they, players. Gonna, they might be a, like, there's going to be a, maybe an org that looks at OG this year and goes, yeah, let's just take a bunch of older yeah. players and see if they can do it. Yeah. OG doing work for the, uh, the veterans moving forward. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I, you know, I was, I was optimistic at the beginning of the season, um, specifically regarding some of this upcoming talent. But I mean, we get here at the end of the season, and a lot of them that are emerging just couldn't really break through that wall of some of our our veteran players. Um, you know, I mm -hmm. think Space Station and and OG just put up a a barrier, and a lot of these other teams, these upcoming upcoming talents just couldn't break through. So I don't know. I mean, hmm. obviously things are going to be a lot different when January rolls around for 2025. We'll see who has, um, you know, put in the work and, and been on the grind throughout the off season. Well, but, you, you um, say that, but, but Moist, Cloud9, and Snowman have all made a semifinal appearance. Yeah. Oh, and, and those are, C9 those are good, is like, not a young team. Yeah, agreed. C9 is not a young team. And, and you're right <laughs> that they have poked the up CRL there. players, they're forever young in my mind. <laughs> you're right that they have poked in there. Yeah. Um, but I think I, next I, I year's our year. I felt like I was I was hoping for some consistency. I would like if TSM is top eight every single event. That's yeah. something a little bit different that I can hold on to. Same thing for Snowman. But we saw like we saw some ceiling. We touched the ceiling mm -hmm. a couple times, but a lot of times we yeah. ended up touching the floor again. So yeah, yeah. I mean that's I the think... biggest thing with young teams, right? It is. That absolutely, you're not going to have the consistency the because you're not going to have the experience. Queso ruined my perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, liquid too. Case, yeah, liquid as well. They ruined my yeah. perspective. I would even say Endpoint Seiko ruined my perspective yeah. because these are just like generational players. And it just gave, and I'm sure I'm not alone, it gave me hope for like this, whatever, whether it's NA or, or I mean, Sam, like Swift, obviously he's mm -hmm. a, a, an awesome talent, but it's hard to do what those teams did. 
And I think yeah, they, they made it look so like easy that we were hoping yeah, it might happen some more. <laughs> it, it's, it's much more realistic for like a BDS trolley situation where an already sure. strong duo picks yeah. up a very good. And I mean, even with NIP, like Swift won a regional in his debut season. That's a good season for your debut like regional. I was, you know, I, I like the two split system more than the three split system. Not going to argue with that. But it was a little sad because it felt like Rebellion, this split, would have made that jump next split. Yeah, to the it felt third, like yeah, they had right. figured it out. They were beating teams they were supposed to beat every single time. They were losing to the big three, and that's pretty much it. Or, yeah, I guess the big three if you want to throw Space Station in there. Um, and then, you know, the season's just over. Like, this yeah, would have been yeah. the next split. Then they carry and they make a couple top fours. It's tough, make- too, because no one knew. Like, next season when we roll into it, all these players and teams are going to expect – two splits they know we've mm-hmm. got to be on our a game right out of the gate we can't have mm-hmm. any fumbles uh, i mean even a team that has won three regionals they have one slip up and now their world spot is in danger i mean it is cutthroat mm-hmm. you've got to be perfect yeah crazy stuff na again a wild event if you didn't watch it go check it out um you know i want to give another shout i know yens mentioned it. eris and moist was seriously phenomenal he absolutely yeah. went crazy so go give it a watch let's jump over to mina a little bit more predictable Falcons complete the perfect domestic season with the sixth regional title. Is that, I remember this right. Is that 20 for TRK? 20 regional championships? One of the greatest we've ever seen, man. I don't Jeez, care. Man, that is, Farmers League, you still got to win. That's a mean a goat. Yeah. It's got to be at this point. I mean, I mean, we got some pioneers like Ahmad and, and, and Senzo kind of and Khaled, Khaled putting, bro. you know, Khaled, putting the one's on the Khaled map, but, is the goat. But the TRK just tw- 20. Re- How many has there been? Has he- uh, tw- I think there's been 30, no, 33, 33. Because 9, 9, wait, no, sorry, 9, 9, 6, 25 regionals. He's so only he lost admit, five. He has lost five. Yeah, that seems like a, like, not that many. I feel like that's wrong. I think I got it wrong. Because that seems like too many. It's been, t- well, wait, was Mina in? It's 9, 9, and 6, is it not? Is, was Mina in, or, no, Mina wasn't in RLCSX. So yeah, no. so nine, nine, nine regionals, six. nine regionals. Yeah, when did he lose five regionals? He's lost four of them. Oh yeah, yeah. I guess to rule one because they won one in spring, one in winter, two in. Yeah, that makes sense. Now we're now we're back. Now we're back. I, uh, I guess even if we're not totally accurate, the point is, it is a very small percentage of the time when TRK is not winning a regional. Unbelievable stuff from him. Um, well, look with this Falcons team continuing to show the level of consistency. I mean, what are the expectations moving into this London major? I mean, they got to be they got to be high. It's it's also not just TRK winning 20 sure. regional championships. It's also Rebaz and Killers winning 10. Like, <laughs> they they were literally they, so they started tough. playing the game 3 weeks ago. You can't like <laughs> <laughs> they weren't they weren't even born two years ago and they have 10 regions that's so I'm, I'm sorry to say but they have 10. that's great no, can i can i say something can i yeah. unleash uh absolute flamethrower of a take your mind flamethrower all right the falcons are the team to beat in london they're the best team in the world mm. whoa i know i've been at war with the media like people it. for a long time i like it and I've I've made my my fair uh, my fair share of jabs at at you know top ten lists um, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But John, Mr. Johnny Boy got it right. That's the best team in the world. <laughs> okay. They're the best team in the world right now. In terms of form, they could still lose. I think they are the team that I would be most I would be most confident if I went to the the Rocket League casino with a hundred sure. Rocket League credits. Yep. I would I would put my money on the Falcons to win it because. They can beat you in so many different ways. They have refused to let up. You know, like Furia. I know I keep bringing up Furia. The complacency is kind of there with Furia. They know it's everything's there. But Falcons have locked in. They show up for work every single weekend. Like it's, you know, they need to win the regional to make it. Um, they get pushed by teams every once in a while, and they always find a way through. Um, yeah, I think... Uh, I think that they're the best team in the world right now. I think their combination, I think their skill sets, all three skill sets mat- match super well. Yeah. yeah Lear's being so offensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, TRK being sort of your classic hard carry midfielder. And then Rawas being a ones counter attacky guy. I think, uh, I don't know how to say his name. I'm going to say Dune, Doom. They're, um, 
their coach is like oh, D7 yeah, yeah, yeah. Ohm. I don't want to say apologies. I, I got to figure that out. Up. Yeah, but he is the most underrated coach in the world because I have watched the Falcons on land make a switch and completely dominate teams, right? Um, yeah, I think they're the best team in the world right now. I think they're the team to be in London. I like that. Team. Well, the, the scary thing is that sometimes they get tested, right? Um, mm. But we say it like that because they always come back stronger. Yeah. Like very often you see a top team get tested and it just means they are, they've fallen off a little bit or the competition mm. has gotten a little bit stronger and you really have to worry if they're going to continue their winning ways. But not with yeah. Team Falcons. With Falcons. They didn't <laughs> drop a game to yeah. the two arguably best teams in the region other than Team Falcons. Mm-hmm. That's well, just how you do it. Speaking of best teams in the region, Twisted Minds has grabbed the Mina 2C this time around. Instead of X Rule 1, they go by the name of anything at this point. Um, listen, Rule 1 in Copenhagen, they went 1-3. and three. I think a lot of people felt like that was a little bit of an underwhelming performance. What, what do we think are the expectations for Twisted Minds with the addition of Ahmad? Higher, for sure. Also because I was talking to, to some people in Copenhagen who follow who have followed the Middle Eastern region a little bit better in the first split than I had. And they were already saying that at the time, rule one might not even be clearly that top two team in the mm. region. Right? You had those players on Twisted Minds coming up already and now with the addition of Ahmed, I mean, they're they're just a very, very strong squad. So yeah. I would say they go at least round five in Swiss. Yeah, aiming for top eight, huh? But they're aiming for top eight. Yeah. They really are. I like it. We'll see if they can do it. They've, um, as you said, they've tested the Falcons. And if you're testing the Falcons, you're a solid squad, no matter uh, no matter the end result. Mina. Just a quick thing. Sorry. Yeah. We got really close to the first time ever. A player coming second in every single regional event. Ahmad, due to some weird goal differential stuff, Twisted Minds ended up, I think, the on the same side of the bracket as Falcons. But there was a chance that if Ahmad <laughs> had come second in this event, he would become the first person in the open era to finish second and lose to the same team in every single regional final. So that would have been kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. Across, that across multiple rosters, been. that's tough. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's jump over team. to Sam because Sam was what crazy. The hell happened I mean, there Sam? was so the thing is, there were so many different possibilities, right? Obviously, Furia looked very good, and they were probably gonna grab that spot. But then you had crew, you had ninjas, you had complexity, you had team secret. There were so many teams battling for that second spot. And what it really came down to, and we've talked about this has been a uh, a recurring theme throughout, it really comes down to those quarterfinal matchups. That mm-hmm. final event. Quarterfinal matchups, who do you get? And and not only who do you get, but like the peers that you're fighting against, who do they get? Are they running into each other? Are they running into teams that they should be, right? And I mean, the, the way that things unfolded was just unexpected. It was, what what's the meme? Cinema, right? Absolute I mean, it was just cinema. crazy, man. So wild. And, you know, I, I don't always, I mean, listen, I watch a lot of Rocket League. That is like my whole life. So sometimes I don't dedicate 12 hours on a Saturday to watch every region that's on. Um, so I don't always catch Sam, but when I do, I think it is, and maybe it shouldn't be anymore, but it's always a surprise at the level because I think you just hear these, you just hear these international narratives of like fury complexity. And for a lot of people, you're just not, you just think that those should be the two teams. You know, you don't, you don't think about a team like Erased. We haven't even heard them mentioned in like an international sense. You know, uh, if you're not tapped into Sam, you probably don't even know who that is. And so it's just always such a, a pleasant surprise to see how many teams are so competitive in Sam. I think, and, and this is a different conversation, but Sam is too good for only two spots at international yes. events. They're too good oh. for that. There's, there are too many teams that should have a chance at international competition. I mean, I, I don't think it's crazy to say that I think there are three, possibly four squads that have the ability to fight into that top eight, like Complexity was. They were fighting into that top eight. They ended mm-hmm. up falling in round five, but I don't think that's something that's exclusive to Complexity. I think Ninjas, Crew, Secret, could, and and I mean, hey, who knows? Maybe W7M. I don't know. You get them on a, the international Euro land. Maybe base they do is pretty good. You know, I think there are there's so much talent in that region. It is so, um, 
it, it's time to grow. It's time to grow. Two spots for that region yeah. is, too, is too few. Yeah, no. I uh, I mean, listen, we don't know what's going to happen with majors and worlds. Um, but as a, as an NA, NA fan myself, uh, absolutely no reason we should have more spots than Sam. Because what does Sam produce? A team that, that probably might be able to win. A team that is probably like a good top eight team. Top four team, maybe. And then two teams that are going to go one, three, two, three. That's what Sam can give you a day. That sounds like, um, sounds like they're an only going to get better. Sounds like an A. <laughs> um, so, yeah, exactly. Like, I, I mean, I'm excited because watching this region all season, uh, I, 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 I found myself at times more excited to watch it than the A. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's, it's, or actually, not just NA, I just because we were on the same weekend, but like, Sam had, like, it was such a nice thing where with Europe, it like, everybody just got stomped by a few teams and then those teams would clash i would always say the na saturdays were better was that were the best but the eu sundays were the best like they were they had different meanings sam the whole event the level is close enough and it's high enough that there are so many teams that can win on any given day we saw it this week with a team that had never qualified past the one three round in swiss getting to the finals yeah. Like that is like about... that's major reasons. That's major region stuff. That's so re- David Rooks, who has been around for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I think uh, Luke's been around for a while too. Three, I, PJ I and too, Luke. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is so very like, confusing because there's also a team called Luke Esports, and Luke is not on Luke Esports. He's <laughs> on Erased. Feels like a loss for uh, marketing. But yeah, I mean that's 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 major region stuff, man. This is oh. a Sam. Is one hundred percent should be considered a major region before Mina or anywhere else, anyone else. Oh. I totally agree, and hopefully they, uh, you know, hopefully there's some sort of adjustment or growth or something for international lands moving forward. But my yeah, question I- is, um, with Furia fumbling a bit here in the second split, do we expect them to be as strong as they were in Copenhagen? I couldn't tell you. I have missed too many of the matches. Yeah. I, uh, I'm just gonna say it. I wasn't a Wikipedia Lik- watcher. I was a Twitter watcher. Okay. I was watching the drama unfold and it was juicy. <laughs> I saw that as well. Oh my God. The hey, but it's so very silly. So yeah. very stupid. We're not even going to talk about it. That's how, how silly and stupid it was. Um, but it, it's just interesting to see more and more teams from that region actually step mm-hmm. up. They're yeah. not always the teams we suspected would be right. challenging. Furia and, and Team Secret and Complexity, but they're there. They sure are. I'm excited to see what Team Secret does at LAN, grabbing mm-hmm. themselves their first appearance um, on LAN this season. And Liquipedia just tweeted it out. If they go 0-3 in Swiss at London, Complexity gets the major spot. If they go 1-3 in Swiss, I think it is a tiebreaker between Secret and Complexity. Y'all correct me and stop me if I'm yes, wrong. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. And then if they go two and three, if they get past that one and three round, they have earned themselves the second seed for Sam, and they will be representing that region at the World Championship. So, you know, I that mentioned so it. Close. It's so much fun. I mentioned it about North America. Spots are locked, but you've got like Mina um, with Twisted Minds. They're looking mm-hmm. poised to grab the second seed. You've got Secret over here. They've got a really good chance to grab the second seed for Sam. So we've got a lot of fun stuff happening in London. Any other teams, Hoodie? Any there other are. teams we'll, that we'll, could maybe... There, there are. Maybe we'll, now. We're all, we'll get back to that <laughs> later. Oh, we'll that will later. we? Will yeah. we now? <laughs> but listen, um, what I loved about this season, and I know I like criticized the two-split thing just because I wanted to see more Shopify Rebellion. You can't hate me for it. Um, is that I think we got so used to regionals not mattering. It was how you did it lands yeah. that made like you yeah. just have to do good enough to make a couple majors, you make the world championship. I think the biggest viewership shift we're gonna see going forward is we've seen regionals matter less and less to viewers as we've gotten into the open era because fans have gotten used to like it's hard to care about regionals sometimes if you're not a hardcore fan when the land is such a, a better atmosphere, but now all these events matter. You know, even if we do implement auto qual and, 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 and day three Swiss. Yeah, again, absolutely. Like Team Secret missed that first region, uh, that first land, but mm-hmm. always 
placed fine. They kept themselves in it, and now they're in a prime spot to make it yeah. in later in the season. So and, and, I, and, I love it. I love it. And on the flip side of that, when you do miss an event like Rebellion, yeah. that has cost them here at the end of the season. KC is in a similar spot. So you're right. Every single event matters. Honestly, every single series matters, right? Because yeah. every time you go further in the event, you get a couple extra points. Yeah, the, I, I really hope. Team. I genuinely, I know you've said it a million times. I really hope they fix the format qualifications. They add yeah. maybe a, you know, a double, like a, not double, but like not single elim playoffs. And they add because the two split system makes the to watching it and the points fantastic. Sure. Right. Like yep. every, like we, every single region is going down to the wire for world spots, yep. which that wasn't, that wasn't the case last time. Thank you for watching this segment of the shift cast. If you want to catch the full episode, check it on our YouTube channel or on Spotify. We'll catch you next time.